Wonder what I did different. Two right next to it and then. Wonder what I did different. I wish there was a way to tell. Hey everybody, welcome to 3D Archer. Greg here. Alright, the Mantis X10 Elite Elite Shooting System. That's what we're gonna cover today's video. Now the Mantis shooting system's been around for a few years now. Um, I heard a lot about it, both in the archery and the pistol world. And you know what? Thought I'd find out for myself. And today we're gonna cover the who, what, how, why, and where of the system. So I built the video around it, just so you know. And up first is the who. Who is Mantis? Mantis is based in Illinois. According to the website, all the assembly, programming, testing, and shipping are out of their offices in Illinois. So, hey fellow Illinoisans. Um, they specialize in firearm training systems, with the Mantis being the primary model. Right? They also have Blackbeard and a couple others. I don't know about those a whole lot. And all Mantis brand products are covered by a two-year warranty. So that's basically the who, Mantis, right? So up next is the what. The Mantis X10 Elite is the newest version from Mantis, and it's universal. Meaning, it's designed to work with handguns, rifles, shotguns, and even works on CO2 powered pistols, both in live fire and in dry fire training. Besides the firearms, it will also work on bows, longbows, recurves, and compounds. I'm not so sure about the crossbow. The X10 is made up of two components, hardware and software which we'll now take a look at. The Mantis X10 Elite is a small device that can be attached using various methods. At its core, the X10 is a precision IMU. That's an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a magnetometer. And all these, what they do is analyze movement patterns. The X10 analyzes thousands of data points per second and sends this information to the software via Bluetooth. All right, everybody, besides all that fancy babble about gyroscopes and thermal opaloscopolies and all that, let's talk about the practical stuff. Range. They say between 25 and 30 feet. I'd say about right. Um, I really think they made it for target archers because I can go down and get my arrows at 20 yards, come back, never had a problem. L much more past that, well, taking your chances. The charge on this lasts about 8 hours, and it takes between um, 2 to 5 hours to recharge, and that's it. So it's pretty simple, easy to use, lasts a long time, and has a decent range to it, unlike my shooting. <laughs> Ooh, so close. All right, everybody. The X10 is part of the second generation of Mantis shooting performance systems. Yeah, I can't say that two times fast. Yeah, can't even say it one time. <laughs> um, the key features of this hardware includes that it's 40% smaller than the previous generation, also 50% lighter, has three times the battery life, four times the data rate, and their big thing they love is the quick detach system. And it's real simple. See the lever? Simply pull it forward and it comes off. There's the quick detach right there. It's pretty much a Picatinny or Piccadilly, Picatinny rail system. And when you get it locked on, it flips all the way forward and you have one secured device. So there's the hardware. Now let's talk about the software. Software takes all that data, right, and it presents it to you in different formats, which we will cover a bit a little bit later, right? I'm going to go into detail on that. Now, like I said earlier, you got to download the Mantis app, right? 
Here's the big one. Didn't know it. <laughs> Not the hard way. They have separate apps for archery, pistol, all the different ones. I thought it was all one. It's not. So you do have to download a different app for each one that you want to use. The device will work with all of them. Just the app won't. I was out at the pistol range and I, <laughs> I couldn't get it to work. <laughs> so, uh, lesson learned. Had fun. Still shot plates anyways. Had a good time. Uh, as I said before, it works on Android, iOS, and the Kindle Fire. Uh, it should be noted it will not work on a laptop. I was told the reason is, is laptops do not support the required Bluetooth low energy connection that the Mantis relies upon. Now, however, according to the website, you can download all your training data, new charts and graphs to their log site by logging in. And I guess you get some stuff that you don't normally get with the app. So you want to get a little bit more detailed, I guess it's from the website. Now, finally, <clears throat> should be noted the Demantis device can only connect to one phone, iPad, Fire, whatever. I thought that'd be cool. You know, multiple people can watch it at one time. I've been told this is a limitation of Bluetooth technology. And if they ever change it, it is something that they're going to look forward to. All right. So one thing real quick deviation from what I'm doing. You can see where I put it here. Uh, it does change how you set your bow down. Normally, I always put this side down. You know, put my boat on this way on the ground, but now I put it that way. Just a minor little note, nothing big. Just I dawned on it when I put it on the wrong way, or I put it down the wrong way, I should say. See, that's why you should never listen to a man that can't speak properly. When you purchase the Mantis X10 Elite, you get the following a beautiful quality package with a foam insert to protect the custom case. Inside that custom case, you'll find the following. The sensor, an adapter mount, the BR7 barrel mount, USB cable for charging, some rubber spacers, the mounting hardware for the adapter, a nice Mantis decal, and a quick start guide. All right, how do you install the Mantis? It is real simple. I tell you, they put a lot of time into making this simple system simple. First thing you gotta do is download the app to your iPhone, iPad, or your Kindle Fire, right? So you can go to the appropriate place. They do have it for Android and um, Apple, iOS, I think that's what they call it, right? The device can be attached multiple ways. It depends on what you're using. It has a um, stabilizer attachment, a rail attachment. It has a little plate that you can put on there. If you've got um, holes for like a quiver or a plunger budget, you can use that. Otherwise, use double-sided tape. Now, I found their double-sided tape was fine, but it came off in the heat in my car down here in the great state of Louisiana. So I went out and got this. And I think it's much better. It's flexible doesn't damage your finish and you can pull it off and just roll the other one right up and use a different one so you can switch it back and forth now where you place the device is it's up to you and you're gonna find you have many options to do it and that's in the next section about setting it up setting up the Mantis X10 Elite is pretty simple but it's very critical because if, if you don't set it up properly it's going to give you false readings and you're going to be making the incorrect corrections. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to open the app. Then you're going to click on the settings button which is on the bottom right. Then from here you're going to need to identify the following. The bow, the hand, mount direction, and mount location. So we're going to cover each of those first. First up is the bow type. Is it a recurve or a compound? The next is what hand you use. Left or right handed. Pretty simple, right? Now the next one is the mount direction, forward or backwards. This is the big one. Forward, the USB charging port is facing towards the shooter. Right? Backwards, the USB charging port is facing away from the shooter. Next up is mount location. You got the bottom, top, left, and right. Now how you determine this, it's where the light is. So if the light is pointing to the left, right it's a left one how they put it their own words 
This setting is for what direction the green power light is pointing. So make sure you do that. Now while you're doing this process, if any time you got a question, you're not sure what it is, simply hit one of the little red eyes with a circle on it and it'll bring you up an explanation for that. And that's it. That's the minimum that's needed. And now you can start training by clicking the train icon on the bottom left of the screen. As an option, you can enter more information, such as the bow setup and target and distance information. So first up, we're going to cover bow setup. To add information on what bow you're using, click the Add Setup button under the Bow Setup and click on the Add button. From here, you can enter the following information, whether you like to use metric or not, the bow type, compound or a recurve, the name of the bow, make and model, the, for the draw, you can do the length and weight, and then it has three stabilizers. Front stabilizer, length and weight, left rear stabilizer, length and weight, and the right rear stabilizer, length and weight. Now, a couple things that I'd love to see added here, which is not in here, is brace height and knock height. For those of us that do that, you know, we track that, that's a big deal. So after you do the basic setup and your bow setup, you can also do target and distance if you so desire. Here you can select from a variety of targets, both paper and 3D. Now it needs to be noted that the only distance you can use is metric. And you cannot switch between targets and distances during a session. If you go in and you switch like halfway through to a different target face, it's going to end the current session and start a new one. Why do I bring this up? Because of 3D. If you're going to go in and try to do different targets, it's not going to work. So the first option you got to select is distance. Distance is between 10 and 90 meters in 5 meter increments. Your next option is the target. You have 21 paper target faces, 3 NFAA field animal faces, five standard 3D faces. They're not really animals, they're just standard scoring rings. And then finally, you got the size. The size is the size of the target face. Um, first is unknown. Then you have 18, 20, 30, 35, 40, 48, 50, 60, 80, 92, 96, and 122 centimeters. Now, once again, when you're done inputting all this information, just simply hit train to start training. All right, we all covered that. You know, it sounds complicated, but it's actually very simple. Once you get it set up, you're pretty much good to go. So how to use it? Just as easy. First thing you can do is turn on your device. See the flashing green light right there? You're going to set your bow down on the ground or somewhere that's flat and stable. Then open the app. Right, show you right here. You're gonna open the app, you're gonna click on connect. It's gonna show calibrate. Then it's gonna say you're ready to shoot and you hit that little target button right there. And guess what? You are now ready to train with the system. And that's it, that's really it. See you there. And all you do, grab thy bow, hold it like you love it. Center yourself. Pleasant thoughts. No snow kept frozen New York winters anymore. Digging out of three feet of snow with a shovel. There you have it. And then you can do a whole bunch of stuff. You can keep shooting, review it, or whatever. But let's talk about some quick points about what they call a session. A session is 36 arrows. Now you're probably wondering, where'd they get this number from? It's real simple. They got it from target archery, like world archery ones, right? They do three arrow ends, 10 ends, that's 30 arrows, but it's 36. You always get two practice ends, and there's your 36. So it's just like a competition, it's perfectly set up. Now at any time in the session, you can stop it by clicking the stop icon on the lower left. 
big thing about it once you stop it right if you don't do it the right way you can't resume if you if you change settings I should say if you change the settings in the middle of a session it's gonna start all new but you can stop and start a session as much as you want as long as you don't change the settings all right so showed you that real quick but now let's take a detailed look at the training screen all right everybody now we're done with all that stuff we did our shot now it's time to look at the training screen first you're gonna have we're gonna cover is the upper task bar all right for training it's the main screen of the training mode and you have four options trace diagnosis timer placement we're gonna cover each one individually first one we're gonna cover is trace and trace is the primary function that you're going to use with this app most likely. The trace is where the app translates the data into lines and shows you how your bow moved during the shot cycle. Now under the trace screen you're going to see that under the word trace is the white question mark with a circle around it. This is the quick help button. Tap it and it'll give you a quick explanation of what each color line represents and tells you how the stability score is calculated. To the far right is your stability score for that shot. Now it's calculated in the orange portion of your shot cycle. The large display in the center is the trace itself. It is a representation of the movement of your bow that the device recorded. And we're going to go into that in more detail in a minute. Farther down and onto the left is the play button. Once you take your shot, you click this to replay your last shot in real time. When you select play, a graph is going to appear in the upper right corner of the trace and it's going to show you how much the mobile moved on two planes, the vertical and the horizontal. Next to that, the play button is a colored bar with a red dot on it. That's your scrub button and it allows you to move forward and backwards in time however you want, fast as you want or as slow as you want. And under that is four more buttons. It says full, set up, hold, and release. If you click the full, it's going to show you the motion of your last shot broken down into the four different colors. If you click set up, it will show you just that part of your shot cycle. All right, for all the shots in that session. So if you want to look at all your holds and all that, that's what it will do. Now, the shot for the selected will be in color. All the others will be gray. And this um, little thing that goes on here with the color, it applies for the hold and release buttons too. Now just below the main display, you're gonna see a representation of how your bow moved during that time in the up and down left and right planes. And under that is the arrow number. It displays the last five arrows shot. Once you shoot more than five arrows, it'll automatically keep going to the latest arrow to the far right, lowest on the far left, right? So if, let's say you go past that number, you're at arrow 15, and you want to go back and see another one. Simply tap the left, far left number, and it'll move them all over. It's just one way to get back, right? And off to the right of the last arrow is a button for you to record notes. And finally, on this screen is the lower taskbar. It shows train, history, groups, and settings. All right, now that we got all the stuff done with what the screen is, let's talk about what those colors mean. Each color represents a different part of your shot cycle, and they are teal is the bow coming up. Green is the bow coming down as you draw. Yellow is where you're settling into the target. Orange is when you are within two degrees of releasing on the target. White is the movement of the bow as you release the arrow until it leaves the bow. And red is the movement after the arrow has left the bow, otherwise known as follow through. You'll also notice there'll be two X's on there. Now this is the big one for us trad archers. The white X is where the device, your bow, was facing when you let go of the string. The red X is where the bow was facing when the arrow left the string. 
Next button on the taskbar is Diagnosis. Again, on this screen, there's that little information button, so if you got a question, just tap it. Now, on this page, you're going to see a breakdown showing you the rising cant of your bow at the time of release. The red segment indicates the direction the bow was traveling just before releasing the arrow. Just like before, you have the scrub button that allows you to move forward and backwards in your shot. Now, you have three ways to view it. Right? You have all shots, which shows you obviously all your shots. Well, in this option, if you tap the display itself, the center graphic, it's going to give you some tips as to the cause if you're unstable. Then you can go to the individual shot and you can do the same thing. Tap it and it's going to give you a cause for why maybe you're dropping your hand or torquing your bow or things like that. Next one is called shot by shot. Now, if you have it on a small phone, it only shows mine as shh, hot, right? This option shows all of your shots. Instead of just like the individual, while using this, you can enlarge an individual shot by tapping it on display, and it'll take you to that individual shot. So it's like a faster way of just sorting through it. The next button is the timer. This one's pretty simple and self-explanatory. This page shows you how long it took you to complete the shot on average. But you can also break it down shot by shot, and it'll even give you a breakdown of each section of the shot cycle. This is pretty cool because it'll give you a base standard to go by. And if you re do all the other functions, it's going to allow you to see, oh, when I do this, I'm rushing this, this section right here, and I tend to do this. So it's going to allow you to make correlations between what you're doing and what's happening. The final button is placement. To use this, you must first use the target and distance option in the settings. There's information button just like the others. Just tap it and it's going to explain a lot. Um, using is pretty easy. Shoot your group, walk down, select the arrow that you want to score, drag the circle to where the arrow hit, and release. Just remember to choose the arrow number first, otherwise you're going to score them out of package. The page keeps score for you and will show you the placement of the arrow on the target in trace view, which is pretty cool. So when you go to trace, you can actually see the target and you'll see where things were moving on the target itself. All right, everybody, before I give you my opinions and final thoughts on the Mantis X10 Elite, I gotta give you some more tips. These are things I learned while filming and I didn't put it into those areas. I either discovered it afterwards. And the first one is a big one to me. Do a motion test. <laughs> Otherwise you'll end up messed up like me. And what that is, is when you get it all set up before you use it, either take your hand and move it in a small circle clockwise or counterclockwise. You can just go up, down, left, or right and watch the trace and make sure the circle is going clockwise or counterclockwise. All that is is confirming that the device and your setup are matching, they're talking like they should. If you don't, let's say you do a clockwise circle and, you, and the trace goes counterclockwise, it means you have something backwards. And it's gonna give you false readings which can ruin your training. All right? That's a big one. Learn it the hard way. And the next one is the X is not where you're aiming. Right? That X is just where that device is pointing. It's generic. The device does not know where you're aiming. So don't take it as the aim point, especially when you use a trace and you put the target on it. It automatically puts the X in the middle of the target. Just so you know. So just keep that in mind about it. And the other one is the distance between the lines and trace in the circle. It's not as big as you think. I think it's half a degree or maybe a degree, something like that. So if you got two lines, it's two degrees maybe. So don't panic about that. Just understand the system. And finally, stability score. Don't obsess over it. It's nice. Um, I did shots where I put, boom, dead center, and I had a lower stability score when I had one off to the side. All right? It's a nice guideline. Use it as a reference, and uh, just don't obsess over it, all right? And there you have it. So, got a couple more things, one more thing to cover. I talked to a lot of professionals about it, and we'll go over that up next. All right, everybody, after those little tidbits, and they're, they're, they're big ones, you know, things that you learn while using it. And I've used it for a month, like I said. 
But also during that time when I'm trying to formulate my opinion and get a feel of this, I reached out to some professionals that I know. And these are professional shooting instructors and some really good shooters for the firearm side. And I asked them if they knew about it and what their thoughts were on it because I wanted to see where we're standing. And while I was doing this, I was actually surprised at how many shooters had no clue what the Mantis system is and what it can do. You know, those that did know about it, I have to say the consensus was positive. And those who did voice concerns, or reservations would be a better word, they did more so out of a concern that it would impact their coaching business. Right? So what does all that mean, Greg? Well, what's your opinion? Well, it's a pretty complicated opinion. I like it overall. I found it to be a powerful tool. Right? But it's a tool that takes you time to figure out what you're doing and what's going on. And by this, I mean being able to translate all that information that you're seeing in the trace and all this other stuff to what is going on physically. You know, to illustrate this, here's my experience on it, right? Mantis has shown that I have a pluck. Even when I shoot well, there's a pluck. It's not a big one, but it's there. Now, I rarely ever had the red X close to the white X. It's always like two, three lines off. I mean, so it's always there. I was lost as to why. Um, I could, I was well, working on this, I was filming it on different angles. I wasn't seeing it with my eyes. I wasn't feeling it with my body. But Mantis picked it up. And it was there, right? And by looking at the trace screen, this thing looked big, like I said before. And look, I, to me, I thought I was like collapsing like this. But what I found out was the actual degrees between the lines, it was much smaller. It's a very subtle pluck. And it's made me more mindful. While I'm out there shooting, I'm like, okay, let's not do that. Let's try that. Roll back and it's helped it really has I have gotten better grooves more consistent with it and my release is getting cleaner so by time I figured out what was going on it really did help but it was that time trying to figure out that was a little frustrating for me now could a good coach have caught that most likely but more, a lot of them couldn't also a lot of them may not have noticed it you know but then again comes the question how many of us have access to a good coach? And there's the key words right there, a good coach. Okay. People that are coaches, <laughs> certified, yep, doesn't mean they're a good coach, doesn't mean they're a people person, it doesn't mean they can translate into you what you want, right? I think Mantis is a great tool for an archer looking to get better who already has a decent foundation to work with. And the better your foundation, the more useful Mantis will be. Because if you don't have it, I think it can overwhelm the beginner. I also think the Mantis would be a great addition to any instructor. Instead of the instructors fearing that it's going to take away people, I think if you embrace it, it's going to enhance the experience and make people better. I know a little bit about uh, teaching people and being an instructor and a coach. Did it for 25 years. That's how I made my living. No other job but doing that, teaching people. And one of the things you know about when you teach people, people learn three different ways. Some people, they just have to be told what it is or read the directions. Some people have to see it. And some people have to do it. Now the majority of people that are learning use two of the three and it's usually the second and third. People have to see it and do it to fully understand it. And that's where we come in about good instructors. When you're an instructor, you got to be able to identify how that student learns and how to get your point across to them. I have cannot tell you how many instructors I see just keep reading off the psycho babble, same words, same words, because they you don't understand it. If they're not getting it, try a different way, right? Being a lefty, I learned that 
my whole life long, right? So having Mantis gives the instructor a visual to show the student. You know, and it allows you also as an instructor to track the progress. Um, you can show the student, look, this is when you, this is your first shot group when you first started. Look at you now. Look how much progress you made. Now, if you're a good coach or if you've done things, you know people normally quit when they don't see progress or they don't feel valued. And Mantis can address both of those as an instructor. Right? And finally, the Mantis X10 Elite allows you to use it on multiple platforms, which is a huge cost saver. So you can do bows, pistols, rifles, shotguns, CO2. That's the big deal. Now, little thing on that. The firearm side is much more richer. They have drills for you. They have so much more for you. The archery, there's no drills. They tell you possible causes and they don't tell you how to correct it. They say, oh, pro improper bow this, um, hand pressure, collapsing. The pistol, man, they get detailed. Oh, you're doing this. Try this drill to get rid of it. They have daily challenges. It is awesome. So if you are a multi-disciplined person, like you do bows, you do firearms, you do pistols and rifles, I think the X10 is perfect because you got one device for multiple platforms, right? So how do I wrap it all up? I think Mantis X10 is awesome. Remember, got to know who it's for, like anything else. You don't sell a Corvette to a grandmother who likes to drive slow five miles per hour. Right? That's not what the vet's made for, and grandma don't like to sit down that low. But So if you're an archer with a decent shot cycle, and you're looking to take that extra step, you don't have access to a quality archer, Mantis X10 Elite is perfect for you. If you're that instructor who wants to take your ability, grow your student base, add more value to your instruction, I think the Mantis can help you on that. All right? Final thing up is the where. What is that? Right here. That's where you can get it. Just in time for Christmas. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the website. I list courses, uh, competitions, archery festivals. Um, also saw some awesome 3D archery targets that I make, like that steer right there. All right. And I'll see you next time with an all-new episode, 3D Archery.